in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your fan blade. It's important that you have a nice, good functioning one so that your vehicle can stay nice and cool. So let's get started. Now you don't have to remove the wheel. I did only for camera purposes, but if you come through the passenger side wheel well, you can see the radiator pedcock right here. Take a 19 millimeter socket. I built myself out of some aluminum foil, a little um, shield right here so that the coolant, instead of it shooting straight out on the frame, it can follow down and fall into my collection bucket. Take a 19 millimeter socket, put it on the um, drain plug and unscrew it. It should not be too tight. If it is, Try to work it gently. You don't want it to break and unscrew it until coolant starts coming out. Don't take this out though, because if you do, it'll start shooting backwards. And now we'll just let this drain. In order to speed up the process, let's go remove the radiator cap. There actually is no radiator cap. It's just an overflow cap. This is what holds pressure on the system. So we'll just unthread this. Air will go in as coolant tries to go out. I need to get this cover out of the way. And in order to do that, I have to get the spare tire tool slash jack handle out of the way. So just unclip it from its retainers and set it aside. And now we can just go along and undo all the push clips that hold this down. I don't have any of my original push clips anymore. These are all aftermarket push clips that someone has put in. So whatever yours are, just go ahead and remove them in whatever way they need to be removed. With all the push clips removed, don't forget there are two over here. Lift this up and slide it out of the way. Let's get this air intake out of here. Lift up on this. Underneath, you'll see the wire. Follow it and unplug the mass airflow sensor. There we go. And I'm trying to remove this whole unit, so I'm just going to unbolt the clamp on the throttle body and take this out as one whole assembly. There is another connector over here. Unplug that. And to actually get to the throttle body, I need to remove this cover, three eight millimeter bolts. Remove these two hoses. And then unscrew this clamp with an eight millimeter socket. Now you can wiggle this whole assembly, pull it right off the throttle body, pick it up and set it aside with a pair of pliers, remove this upper radiator hose clamp. And then you can break the hose free off the radiator. Sometimes it needs to be persuaded a little bit. So very gently with the um, pliers, break it free. Now you can slide it off. Since the coolant has mostly drained, there shouldn't be any in this hose, which there isn't, that's perfect. On the driver's side, there is the overflow hose. Remove the clamp, break the hose free very gently and remove the hose. Now I will be removing this overflow tank only for visual purposes. You don't have to remove it, but otherwise there's no way I can get the camera in here to show you how to remove these um, lines, the transmission lines. So I like to get a better angle for you. Again, you do not have to remove this. Okay, here we go. Now you can see a lot better. This is what's holding the line on here, this plastic clip. So remove it. Just pry on the two little tabs. At this point, you want to spray some rust penetrant here to lubricate the line, but also clear out any debris. And then you need one of these tools uh, that is specifically made for these lines here. Find the right size, slide it over, and press it in. Make sure you have a collection bucket underneath to catch any fluid that might come out. Okay, yep. Once it goes in all the way and it bottoms out, go ahead and pull on the line. There we go. Take the line out, get your tool off, and then we'll do the same thing to the lower line, which is straight down. And with the line out of the way, you can remove this eight millimeter bolt that holds on the fan shroud. There's one on this side and then one on the other side. So do both. Next, you need a fan clutch removal tool, which looks like this. It's a basically a giant wrench that goes on the end of your air hammer. And you use this to break free the fan clutch from the pulley here. And you wanna do this before the belt is off. That way it can be held in place as much as possible. So situate your tool and you want to spin it counterclockwise. This is a regular thread. It's not reverse thread. That's it. It broke free. Sometimes it takes a lot more than this, but at this point you can spin it and it should come off of the pulley. Make sure you don't drop it though. So be careful as you do this. Okay, there we go. Now you can pull the shroud and the fan up at the same time. There we go. 
I'm gonna go ahead and close my pet cock so that it can stop dripping. Nice and snug, but not too tight. It's just plastic. Now with the 13 millimeter socket, remove all four of these bolts that mount the fan clutch to the fan itself. Now you can separate it. Sometimes you'll need a hammer to persuade it. There you have it. Take your new fan, make sure it's going in the right direction, line it up, and let's bolt it on. Now let's bolt this onto the water pump. Now when it comes time to putting on the fan, you have to put it in together with the fan shroud. So drop these two in. Watch out for your radiator fins. You don't want to damage anything. Try to position the fan shroud so that it's as lined up as it can be with the radiator, with its mounting points. At this point, I'm gonna to try to thread on this fan onto the water pump so that it actually holds itself on because it is heavy to uh, hold at this angle. Okay, there we go. Getting it to catch onto the first thread is always the most difficult part, but once it does, you can just spin it and it should easily go on. And now it's bottomed out and we need to tighten it up for which we can use our special fan clutch tool. Set up the tool and tighten it up. The water pump started spinning, so I know it's tight. On the side here, make sure the fan shroud goes down into this hook on the radiator, on both sides that is. Mine did, perfect. Now you can put in the transmission lines. Make sure that it snaps into place like that. Give it a tug to make sure it doesn't pop back out. Bring in the safety lock and lock it over like that. Now let's bolt up the fan shroud. Put in the two little eight millimeter headed bolts that held this on. There's one on each side. Let's get the upper radiator hose in. Bottom it out. Put the clamp back on. Now bring in this cover here at the front, line it up, and let's put in all the push clips that hold this on. And don't forget to put back the spare tire tool. And lastly, the air filter housing with the rest of the intake here. Slide that over the throttle body, just like this. You had two hoses that went in here. Let's tighten up this clamp. Make sure this is pushed on all the way when you tighten the clamp. Nice and snug. These hoses are in. There's a wire here. Reconnect the sensor here. And on this side, you have the mass airflow sensor. Reconnect that. Make sure it clicks. Secure the harness and secure the air filter housing. Now it's time to fill up the cooling system. What I have set up here is a spill-proof funnel, which also helps bleed the system. Because this is now the highest point in the cooling system, naturally the air will want to rise up into my funnel and not get trapped in the system. The only downside with doing this on this type of system is this overflow tank is also the filler and it's not supposed to be full. If you fill this all the way up, you are way over full and it's gonna start spilling out once it warms up. So once you do fill this all the way up, if you choose to raise it up into the funnel, you wanna make sure you drain some afterwards, either with a turkey baster or a fluid extraction syringe, whatever you have, or just drain it out the radiator just a little bit. But there's a mark, which I'll show you in a second, and you don't wanna be above that mark, otherwise you're over full. So what I'm gonna do here is just put in a little bit, looks like this wasn't tight all the way. Make sure this is tight if you use this type of funnel, otherwise it'll leak out here as you, uh, as you do this. So now let's go ahead and put in the appropriate amount of coolant. It'll take about two gallons, maybe two and a half, depending on how much you drained. And if you don't know what kind of coolant to use, refer to your owner's manual and uh, make sure you use the appropriate type. If you look closely, you can see right there, it says cold fill on the reservoir, that's exactly where you want to fill it up to. If you put a flashlight in the, either in the tank or to the side of it, you'll see the coolant line, the level, and just make sure you don't go past it unless you are actively trying to bleed it 
in your um, funnel here. So I actually filled mine right up to that fill mark. So now let me run you through the bleeding procedure. First, you want to wait for it to naturally stop bubbling. If it's still bubbling, just give it a minute. Wait for it to stop getting air out of the system. All right, now with the key in the ignition, let's fire it up. Starts right up, that's perfect. Now, once it's turned on, let's uh, turn on some heat here. So turn on the blower, make sure the AC is off. Turn the heat all the way up. I have this digital display. If you have the analog one with the knobs, just turn it all the way up. You want the coolant circulating through that heater core and I'm gonna set it to vent. That way I can feel when the air blows warm over here. So I'm just gonna give it a minute and then uh, wait for the air to blow over here. While it's warming up, pay attention to this temperature gauge and make sure it doesn't go above the halfway mark. Right now it's still cold, I just turned it on, but once it reaches full operating temperature, shut it off uh, and uh, obviously make sure you have heat through the vents. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.